Blessed be the one holy and living God. Glory to God forever and ever. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. with you? Let us pray. Let our continual mercy, O Lord, cleanse and defend your church. And because it cannot continue in safety without your help, protect and govern it always by your goodness. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Hosea. When Israel was a child, I loved him. And out of Egypt, I called my son. The more I called them, the more they went from me. They kept sacrificing <clears throat> to the Baals and offering incense to idols. <clears throat> Yet it was I who taught Ephraim to walk. I took them up in my arms, but they did not know that I healed them. I led them with cords of human kindness, with bands of love. I was to them like those who lift infants to, the, to their cheeks. I bent down to them and fed them. They shall return to the land of Egypt, and Assyria shall be their king, because they have refused to return to me. The sword rages in their cities. It consumes their oracle priests and devours because of their schemes. <clears throat> My people are bent on turning away from me. To the Most High they call, but he does not raise them up at all. How can I give you up, Ephraim? How can I hand you over, O Israel? How can I make you like Adma? 
How can I treat you like Zeboim? My heart recoils within me. My compassion grows warm and tender. I will not execute my fierce anger. I will not again destroy Ephraim, for I am God and no mortal, the Holy One in your midst, and I will not come in wrath. They shall go after the Lord who roars like a lion. When he roars, his children come trembling from west, from the west. They shall come trembling like birds from Egypt and like doves from the land of Assyria. And I will return them to their homes, says the Lord. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Please join me in reading the psalm responsively by half verse. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. Let all those whom the Lord has redeemed proclaim. He gathered them out of the lands. Some wandered in desert wastes. They were hungry and thirsty. Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble. He put their feet on a straight path. Let them give thanks to the Lord for his mercy. For he satisfies the thirsty. Whoever is wise will ponder these things. A reading from Paul's letter to the church in Colossae. If you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above, where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When glory, who is your, when Christ, who is your life, is revealed, then you also will be revealed with him in glory. Put to death, therefore, whatever in you is earthly, fornication, impurity, passion, evil desire, and greed, which is idolatry. On account of these, the wrath of God is coming on those who are disobedient. These are the ways you also once followed, when you were living that life. But now you must get rid of all such things, anger, wrath, malice, slander, and abusive language from your mouth. Do not lie to one another, seeing that you have stripped off the old self with its practices and have clothed yourselves with the new self, which is being renewed in knowledge according to the image of its creator. In that renewal, there is no longer Greek and Jew, circumcised and uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave and free. But Christ is all 
and in all. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. So now that I have your anxiety all stirred up, 
I want to tell you, I don't think that's what Jesus is saying in this parable. It is not a test or a judgment on how well we're doing, how well you did in your math class this semester, or how well you are living an ethical and moral law of faith following the law. But rather, it's just a statement of reality. Because the truth is, every night when you go to bed, there is this sense that your life is being demanded of you. As you think back on your day, and you think, did I feel joy today? Did I feel fully alive today? Did I sense the eternal gifts of love and faith and hope in this day? And if you didn't, to think, well, how can I feel better tomorrow? How can I do better tomorrow? How can I be more fully alive in my faith tomorrow? This reminds me of the Ignatian examine, another exam that isn't really a test. St. Ignatius of Loyola, a 16th century Roman Catholic priest and reformer, this is post-Reformation, so he looks around the Roman Catholic Church and he sees a need for reform. And so he goes about this in many ways. One is to send out uh, and to raise up and send out scholar priests to go and to start Jesuit schools throughout the world. But the other is to come up with a series of what he calls exercises to help us to become fully alive, more fully in touch with how God is working in our lives and how God is calling us to live. And one of those exercises is the examine, a series of questions to reflect on every night before you go to bed. And modern scholars have simplified those into really two basic questions. The first being, how did I sense God's presence in my life today? At what moments in my life did I feel that God was near to me? And then the next question, in what moments in my life did I feel that God was far away from me? That I, there was a distance, a separation between me and God? And then the final, you know, all of that is to lead to what can I do better tomorrow? How can I become closer to God and to my faith in the following day? A simple tool to help us to become fully alive to God's presence. So this is what I think Jesus had in mind when he told this parable. How can I help my disciples be more fully alive to their faith and to God's presence working in their lives. And Jesus sees, I think, in response to the two brothers' question, fighting over an inheritance, that one of the things that may get in the way of being fully alive to connecting to our faith are our possessions. And more particularly, our relationship to our possessions. This is one of the things in our lives that can separate us from God. This difficult and seductive subject of possessions is a common theme in the writings of the uh, writer Luke. From Mary's song about the reversal of fortunes of the full and the empty to Jesus' blessing of the poor and woe to the rich in his Sermon on the Plain to the early Christians sharing all in common in the book of Acts, Luke holds up the voluntary sharing of one's good as an aspect of discipleship, a way to follow Christ, a way to become more fully alive. And today we hear Jesus quoting a proverb, Take care, be on your guard against all kinds of greed, for one's life does not consist in the abundance of possessions. And then he goes on to tell this parable of the successful farmer who plans to hoard away all of his abundant grain and goods so that in the coming years he can relax 
eat, drink, and be merry. And Jesus says, and so it is with those who store up treasures for themselves, but are not rich towards God. Jesus calls this kind of behavior foolish. Foolish, I think, because God calls us to be fully alive today and tomorrow, to live to be fully alive today and tomorrow, and not to worry about being fully alive next year. But if we can just attend to coming alive to our faith today, next year, we'll take care of it. Listening to one of my podcasts I listened to this week about, uh, about the scripture, I heard about this painting that's on the front of your bulletin. Take a look at it. It's by an artist, an Episcopal artist in Texas, James Jacknett. And he likes to paint the parables for contemporary settings. And as I looked at this, I thought of two phrases that stand somewhat in relationship but are not equal to each other. Standard of living and quality of life. The rich fool has a big and well-appointed home. But he is alone and he has death visiting him at his dinner table. And we see in the next room this other figure. Is it a statue or is it a child? But it's missing a heart, reminding us that the way that the rich fool lives is heartless. But then there's the family or community next door, and they're crowded around a table. They don't have as much as the rich fool, but they seem to be filled with love and joy and hope, enjoying being together, sharing their meal together. For surely you could look into the fanciest home in Brevard and find very unhappy people. And equally, you could look into one of the poorest homes in Brevard and find a family in love with one another, living with joy. God wants a superior quality of life for all of us and an adequate standard of living. I think this is what Jesus means by being rich toward God, knowing that God loves you so much that you are free to be that living sacrifice, to pour out your life for others. There is a video diary about this painting that the artist shares. And he says that one of the things he was painting in this, in this work was relationships. It was about relationships, both the contentious relationship of the two brothers who asked Jesus to arbitrate their conflict over their inheritance, also the relationship between the rich man and God, and the relationship between the rich man and his possessions. The family, whose possessions are few, eat together, and they are rich in their own company. Thus, these two homes are a contrast to one another. Desire versus need. Death versus life. Excess versus sufficiency. The artist's painting reminds us that Jesus wishes for us abundance. Not abundance of possessions, but a life rich toward God. I see something else in this painting. When I look at this group gathered around the table sharing a meal together, I see the image of the Last Supper, of Holy Communion, of sharing Eucharist in the Great Thanksgiving. God's hope for us is a hope for relationship, 
a hope for a meal where we are all invited and we're all to share from whatever we have, whether it's the widow's, widow's might or a great fortune. And in that sharing of the meal, we also receive what we need. Our tummies are full, but not stuffed. But our hearts are stuffed, and we are rich towards God. So remember, no matter what anxiety comes up in your dreams, it is not a test. It's simply a tool. Is simply a way for you to grow in your faith. All of the parables, all of the questions of our faith, they help us to become more fully alive in love and hope and joy toward God and toward one another. Thanks be to God. Let us affirm the mysteries of our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. <clears throat> we believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets, we believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. <clears throat> Sisters and brothers, children of God, let us come before the Most High with humility, saying, Great and holy God, incline your ear to us. Set our minds on things divine, O God, that your church may guard itself against the love of earthly things and instead be rich toward you. Great and holy God, may all who dwell in the world, those of both high degree and low, incline their hearts to wisdom and meditate on understanding. Great and holy God, give us grace to be wise and generous stewards, O God. Open our eyes to see your abundance and our reliance. Great and holy God, bless all those to whom we are connected. May we value our relationships more than our possessions. May we realize that in Christ, all human distinctions cease to matter. We pray for justice and peace. Great and holy God, comfort and heal all those who are in pain or sorrow or any kind of trouble. May we who have known sorrow, pain, and trouble show them mercy and compassion and remind them of the hope we have in Christ.
great and holy God. We acknowledge our mortality before you, everlasting God, and we rejoice in the hope of being raised with your Christ. We remember before you the lives of our forebears. May they find in you rest from their labors. We pray for those who have died, especially John Huggins and Louise Meslick. Great and holy God, I invite you now to a time of quiet reflection. Your intentions are invited silently or aloud. We remember those who are awaiting childbirth, Taylor and Brendan Elliott, Magdalena and Christian Funk, Jessica and Kevin McCaig, Kate and James Neal, and Elizabeth Richardson and Bradley Riddle. In our diocese, we pray for Christ Church Sparta and Church of the Savior Newland. In our Anglican communion, we pray for the Church of the Province of West Africa. The flowers at the altar are given with thanksgiving for all the office volunteers who use their many gifts to keep our parish office running smoothly. Let us now confess our sins to God. God of all mercy, we confess that we have sinned against you, opposing your will in our lives. We have denied your goodness in each other, in ourselves, and in the world you have created. We repent of the evil that enslaves us, the evil we have done, and the evil done on our behalf. Forgive, restore, and strengthen us through our Savior, Jesus Christ, that we may abide in your love and serve only your will. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our, the grace of, the, of Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. You may be seated when you're ready. Good morning, a warm welcome to you this morning. I'm Elizabeth Rolls, Rector at St. Philip's, and I welcome you to worship this morning, especially if you're new among us, visiting, or if you are watching on Facebook Live, we're so glad that you have joined us. If you are new among us, um, I, I would love for you to uh, make yourself known by filling out a newcomer card that you can find um, in the pew rack in front of you and by letting us know as you exit introducing yourself to us We're so glad you're here. Are there any birthdays or anniversaries or other special? Occasions that we would like to mark with prayer this morning Is this an anniversary coming All right Well, you can also look in the back of your bulletin to see those others who are celebrating birthdays and anniversaries this week, and uh, we can raise them up together in prayer. Please join me in a spirit of prayer. Oh God, our times are in your hands. Look with favor on these who begin another year together. Help them to grow in courage and strength each and every 
day of their lives and help them together to become more fully alive in you. Through Christ our Lord we pray. Amen. Amen. Happy anniversary. Uh, I want to draw your attention to a few things that are happening in August. We have a busy month coming up. Next Sunday on August 7th, we will have a guest preacher and a guest um, teacher. Uh, Tom Butler will be with us. This is part of our Contagious with Love um, symposium program. Um, he will preach at both services and then offer an adult uh, formation uh, hour between services at 915. You are invited to come and be a part of it. We'll have a little uh, a little refreshment as well uh, at 9.15, so come and be a part of this great offering from Contagious with Love. Um, then also next uh, Sunday at 12.45 at Lutheran Church of the Good Shepherd, our partner parish and youth and family ministry, um, we will be offering a program on gun violence and safety in schools. Um, we'll have a panel of people there, including um, someone from the sheriff's office, to come and talk to us about safety in schools and how to talk to children about anxieties that they may be having around going back to school. Um, so do come. There will be child care as well as, um, as, well as uh, program for our older kids, youth, and pizza. So there's something for everyone. So come and be a part of that. Um, I also uh, want to uh, let you know that on Monday, August 8th, um, the, uh, em Emily Lowry from Haven Homeless Shelter will be coming to speak to the Daughters of the King. And it's an open program, so if you have an interest in that ministry in our community, you can come and learn about that. And then on August 20th, we're going to have a special family day at Terra Nova, which is a retreat center up in Cedar Mountain, and um, this is for all our families who have children in the home um, to come and, and to have a fun day at a lake. It's from 10.30 to 4.30. We'll be providing sandwiches, and, and um, you can bring a, a snack or something uh, to share um, on that day. Um, and then on August 22nd, you can sign up to give blood with the American Red Cross. Um, and you sign up through the Red Cross website. You can always call the church office as well. And then last but not least, save the date for the end of August. August 28th is the return of the parish picnic at Conesty. Um, this is uh, something I have not yet experienced since uh, we've been pretty much in COVID since I've been here. But pre-COVID, I hear this was a great, fun um, event for, for all ages um, at, um, at Conesty Falls. So uh, save that date and more information will be coming. And now my friends, hear these words from our Psalm. Let them give thanks to the Lord for his mercy and wonders he works for his children, for he satisfies the hungry and fills the thirsty with good things.
All things come of thee, O Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. All thanks and praise are yours at all times and in all places, our true and loving God. Through Jesus Christ, your eternal word, the wisdom from on high by whom you created all things, you lay the foundations of the world and enclosed the sea when it burst out from the womb. You brought forth all creatures of the earth and gave breath to humankind. Wondrous are you, O Holy One of Blessing. All you create is a sign of hope for our journey. And so, as the morning stars sing your praises, we join the heavenly beings and all creation as we shout with joy. and honor are yours, creator of all. Your word has never been silent. You called a people to yourself as a light to the nations. You delivered them from bondage and led them to a land of promise. Of your grace, you gave Jesus to be human, to share our life, to proclaim the coming of your holy reign, and to give himself for us a fragrant offering through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer. You have freed us from sin, brought us into your life, reconciled us to you, and restored us to the glory you intend for us. We thank you that on the night before he died for us, Jesus took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, gave it to his friends, and said, Take, eat, this is my body, broken for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, Jesus took the cup of wine, said the blessing, gave it to his friends, and said, Drink this, all of you. This cup is the new covenant in my blood, poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. And so, remembering all that was done for us, the cross, the tomb, the resurrection and ascension, Longing for Christ's coming in glory and presenting to you these gifts your earth has formed and human hands have made. We acclaim you, O Christ. Dying, you destroyed our death. Rising, you restored our life. Christ Jesus, come in glory. Send your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these gifts of bread and wine that they may be to us the body and blood of your Christ. Grant that we, burning with your Spirit's power, may be a people of hope, justice, and love. Giver of life, draw us together in the body of Christ. And in the fullness of time, gather us with blessed Philip and all your people into the joy of our eternal home. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, we worship you, our God and creator, in voices of unending praise. Blessed are you now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. We who are many are one body, for we all share in the one bread. Alleluia. These are the gifts of God for you, the people of God.
Let us pray with those who are watching from home. Gracious God, since I cannot receive you today in the sacrament of your body and blood, I ask you to come spiritually into my heart. Cleanse and strengthen me with your grace, Lord Jesus, and let me never be separated from you. May I live in you and you in me, in this life and in the life to come. Amen. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Thank you. 